Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I just had to start this video off by saying thank you because this channel has reached over 10,000 subscribers. We're at, I think, about 10 and a half thousand subscribers. I'm extremely grateful. It's a huge number. There's more subscribers on this channel than there are bird species in the world. So thank you so much. But like most things in life, it's not about quantity. It's really about quality. And that's where like, I can't say thank you enough. The quality of the subscribers on this channel are just great. I love hearing all your feedback uh, through emails and messages and in the comment section. So thank you for that. Having a great community like this just makes it so much more enjoyable to upload these videos to YouTube. And I know I haven't been able to upload much in the last two months. It's been a hectic summer, uh, but my field season will end shortly. So I'll be able to get back to making videos regularly, which I'm very excited for. I've thought of a lot of little ideas and ways to improve the videos. I'm excited to get into that. And speaking of videos, what we're doing today, well, it's my birthday today and I wanted to go birding. I wanted to take some photos because I have not touched my camera in two months. So I'm definitely rusty. So I'm at my girlfriend's family's orchard. My girlfriend's here, her parents are here and we'll stay overnight. So right now it's middle of the day, sun is directly over us beaming down. So what I might do is I might just take a little tour around the orchard with Emily's dad. He's gonna show me around and he also has a YouTube channel where he talks about his orchard. So I'll link that down below. And uh, we're just gonna walk around. He's gonna show me where all the insects are hanging out, where all the birds are hanging out. And I'll probably do some macro during the afternoon when the sun's a little bit too harsh. And then in the afternoon and tomorrow morning, I'll do some bird photography. Honestly, today it's just a, a video about hanging out. Like I just wanna shake off the rust. I don't know if that's a saying. I don't know, shake off the rust. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Shake off the rust. What's the saying? Well, according to Google, that's a term. So I'm gonna keep using it, shaking off the rust. So today's video is just about enjoying nature, using my camera, hopefully getting some good shots and shaking off the rust. So stay tuned and I'll let you know what happens. I just found a great patch of flowers right next to me with a ton of insects inside. So I thought I'd go over my macro setup and what I like to do. I'm by no means a macro expert. I don't do it as much as I'd like to, but whenever I get the chance to do it, I have a ton of fun, so I should do it more often. But most important part for me is having this wireless trigger on top of the camera, and that'll fire off this wireless flash. So the reason why I like this is because you're not limited by anything. If you were just mounted on top of your camera, your light's always coming from the same direction, which doesn't mean you won't get good photos. It just means you're a little bit more limited. Whereas once you have a wireless trigger and a wireless flash, you're able to move that 360 degrees around your subject. So my technique that I like to do is pretty straightforward. What I'll do is say, for example, find a flower with an insect on it. If it's an overcast day, pretty simple. I'll just walk up to it, focus, and I'll position the flash usually over the eyes, maybe at a 45 degree angle, but towards the direction of the eyes, just so that you get that nice catch light right in the top of the insect's eyes. And if I'm photographing on a sunny day like today, one technique that I like to use is I like to remove light and add light. So if there was an insect sitting on this flower and I wanted to photograph it, but that sun is really harsh and creating a really harsh light on the insect and the flower, what I'll do is I'll remove light, so remove that sunlight by either standing over the flower or I'll use this big flash diffuser and I'll just position it over the sun so that it's blocking the flower. And then I wanna add my own light, which is this nice soft diffuse light coming from this diffuser. So it's a really easy technique. I don't use my flash at a really high power. It's usually, I think one over 32 is my sweet spot where I use it a lot. And one of the benefits of having the flash off camera is if you happen to take a photo and you realize it's a little bit too strong, instead of having to go in and change the settings, sometimes I'll just back up a bit. So it saves a little bit of time. Another thing that I look for when I'm taking these photos in harsh sunlight is when I'm blocking the light on the flower and on the insect, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not blocking the sunlight behind it. So what that does is you'll get nice soft diffused light on the insect and the flower, 
but leave the sunlight in the back of your insect because that's going to create a nice bright background and I find for macro really bright backgrounds work very well for insects and flowers. So I made it out to the orchard. There's about two hours left of sunlight, so I'm definitely focusing on birds now. And it feels so nice to finally be able to look for birds and take photos of them at the same time. So right behind me here, there's um, a tree. Uh, yeah, you can't see it, but that really tall one right here. Um, that right now, there's two eastern bluebirds, male, female, both carrying food. And I'm trying to wait and see where they're gonna go back to. I don't know if they still have an active nest or if it's just fledglings that are out and they're trying to feed them. So I'm uh, a ways back, just waiting to see what happens there. And on the left, I actually have a clear view of this patch of yellow flowers that some American goldfinch are going to and feeding off of the seeds in there. So I have that, and then to the left of that, there's an Eastern Phoebe on a dead snag, just sallying out for insects and catching insects. So just in this small spot here, oh, bluebird going down. All right, well, these bluebirds must have a nest somewhere over here. So I'm gonna back off a little bit more, give them some space and see if they come down at all. There's also a ton of barn swallows flying overhead. I think there's a certain insect that just emerged recently because there was a feeding frenzy this morning down by the water. So this is, uh, this is turning out to be a pretty good evening. I don't have any photos yet, but I'll keep trying and hopefully we get something good. Stay tuned. Sometimes with bird photography, one of the hardest things is knowing when you're too close. And in that situation, I just knew I was too close. I didn't know exactly where there was a nest. I, I honestly thought it was fledglings, but no, they actually do still have a nest in one of the nest boxes here. But I was just standing there watching them in the tree over here and they had food. So they had every intention to go feed their young. So I knew that I was probably close to the either the fledglings or the nest. So I just backed off about 10 meters or so. And once I did that in about 30 seconds, they came down. One landed on this beautiful open snag. I got some video of that and I got a photo. Looked like it was holding a cricket, a large cricket of some sort. And then it just flew into the nest and fed the young and then flew out. So that's one of the hardest skills I find to learn when you're first getting into bird photography is knowing when you're too close, you're being too intrusive on your subject. And that just comes with time. Like over time, you kind of realize and pick up on some of these cues that they give you. So that was nice to see. It was just a quick fix, just backing up a bit, and then the birds will just go do their thing, and then you can set up in a in a nice area further out and still get a decent shot. That's pretty cool. I see some Eastern Phoebes catching insects in here, but every time I try to get a little bit closer, they're always flying off to the next row over because these are just rows of uh, trees here. I've been struggling with them a bit, but man, it feels so nice to do some bird photography again. Even if none of these are stellar images, I'm, I'm just so happy. And I know tomorrow morning is probably going to be even more productive than today. Most of the good light is starting to go now. Sun's starting to set. After I left you guys with those bluebirds, I saw a few Eastern Phoebes that I tried photographing. They wouldn't stay put for more than two seconds, so I can never really snap a good photo. The only one that stayed long enough for me to get a photo was the one that landed on a pool net. 
So obviously not really a usable photo, but still funny. And then I came to the back of the orchard. There was a few wrens on the outside in nice light, but you know, doing as wrens do, they just always moving around in the thick stuff. There was always a branch in front. There was always half of it that was lit by the sun, the other half in the shade. It always looked weird. I came to the back and there was an Eastern Kingbird that was really compliant. Like he just didn't care. He would land right next to me. Uh, well, not right next to me, but you know, within a few meters. And, oh, there he is actually. He's still sallying here for insects. And now he perches on an actual tree. So what happened was the light was beautiful. It was beautiful sunset. Oh man, he's just taunting me now. He's landing on every tree. So <laughs> it was beautiful sunset. And I was trying to line him up with the sunset and I did so, but he kept landing on either the irrigation or the wires. So no natural perches. And I was waiting for him to land on an actual tree so I can get, you know, more of a natural shot. It's still a nice photo with these wires and irrigation, but it's not obviously what I wanted. And now he's landing on every single tree. morning before I even had the chance to turn on my vlogging camera this morning I had two pretty decent photo opportunities one was a young skunk that was right behind the shed he was just digging in the ground looking for grubs so I got down low got a few shots of him and then when I left him I went to this small little wildlife pond that they have in the area I was looking more for insects just to see what was around and active and a young common yellowthroat popped out from the grasses so I think I got a few good shots of him so I'm in the back of the orchard now. There's all the usuals around, kingbirds, bluebirds, a couple kingbirds fighting, um, song sparrows, chipping sparrows, all the usuals. So I'm gonna try to find some nice perches with some nice light. Behind me, the light is gorgeous. And hopefully we can get some more photos or footage and I'll talk to you guys soon. had another great moment with a common yellow throat another young one like the one from this morning so what I'm doing right behind me you can probably tell the Sun is a little bit harsh it's later in the morning so I've been working the edge of the orchard here because they have a bunch of trees lined up so it's creating a nice dappled light effect it's not too bad right now but in the next hour or two I'll probably end up stopping because the lights gonna get a little bit too harsh but a common yellow throat popped out and it was really curious about me like I wasn't moving I was in just the perfect spot and he just kept coming closer and closer and closer. What I'll do now is I'll just kind of do a last lap of the orchard. If I get anything good, I'll put it up now, but the light's getting pretty strong. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Thank you again for 10,000 subscribers and I'll see you in the next video. Happy birding.